Today we're going to learn how to paint your pet, or if you don't want to paint your pet, we're going to learn how to paint anybody else's pet. So let's get started. Okay, lots of people want you to paint their pet. Uh, I painted pets for years. I called them the pet friends and I would paint them. Oh my gosh, there was a time when I was painting 20 of these things a day. Uh, you get a lot better at them when you paint 20, I mean 20 a month. You get a lot better when you paint 20 a month. Um, and what it allowed me to do was it really taught me how to learn how to paint and how to paint fast. Not as fast as this video is showing because this is speeded up to probably eight times as fast as I usually paint. But the point is to look at the overall shapes, not get bogged down into any particular thing, not to look at the eyes or the nose or the mouth. None of that matters. All that matters is what color uh, are these shapes, or not what color, but what value. Are they light or dark? And then what shape are they? And you plug your uh, value into the shape. So as you can see from what has happened so far on this collie, I'm painting from the darks to the lights. All the darks are already in and they all kind of uh, create a pattern that you can see. I mean, you can already see that it's going to be a dog. Now, I'm, what I'm doing on the side is I'm mixing up all the mid-tones, because the rule is once you put, oh, I didn't. Instead, what I did was I went right to the lights. I knew I had to preserve the whites, but I didn't want to use white out or that masking fluid, because I hate how artificial it looks when you take it off. So I used my usual triad for whites, which is cerulean blue, uh, rose, and Naples yellow. And I put those colors near each other on a 140 piece uh, arch paper, but I don't rub them. And you can see the individual colors there. It's a red, a yellow, and a blue. And what they do is they will create white. Again, I leave the whites of my paper completely white, but there are very few whites that uh, exist in, in the real world. So there would be very few at the very end. Now I'm into mid-tones. Anything that from here on is mid-tones. So the rule is I can't put anything in that, that's as light as what I put in for my whites. And I can't put anything as dark as I did for my step one, which was my darks. Anything else is going to be considered a mid-tone. And so now I just squint my eyes and I look for shapes that are mid-tones. And those mid-tones are going to be most of those browns and oranges that you see. And so that's what I'm doing here. I probably mixed up four or probably about four different mid-tones that I can pick up with my brush and bring them in to, uh, to fill in the shapes. Because if I filled them all in with one shape, that would look... It would end up looking like a, a cartoon uh, or, um, or like a, a, a coloring book. And that's not what I want to do. So you saw the value finder made an appearance there. I checked out and made sure that my rule was being followed, that nothing was as dark as my original darks and nothing's as light as what I put in as my lights. And now I'm going to return to my midtones because that's all that's left. And midtones tend to be oranges, reds, light greens, any, any of those tend to be mid-tones, and of course any neutrals, but we're not going to get into neutrals today because um, because I don't want to. There are different videos for that. <laughs> Let's just say that in this case, the um, the triad that I use for the lights is, being, is working as a mid-tone. If you really squint your eyes, or if you look at the photograph, you'll see that what I represent with those three colors is actually a gray, and I never match the uh, painting to the actual photograph because photographs tend to take color away and then will give you a lot of grays. So if you match your painting to your photograph, um, you'll be successful. I call that being a matchy-matchy painter. I was a really good matchy-matchy painter for a long time. But the result is that you end up with a painting with an awful lot of gray in it and it kind of looks um, washed out. Um, it will look like an old pair of jeans, like a pair of jeans that you put in the wash and, and washed it 30 or 40 times. It just doesn't look fresh and like it pops off the page. So um, as accurate as that is, when you can be really accurate and, and match everything to a photograph, it might not succeed as a painting. And it took me the longest time to figure out why. And now I know why. Now I decide what the value is and I plug color into value instead of matching the photograph to the painting. So now you can see the collie is starting to take some shape. I've got all my darks in, which you can still, if you squint, you can see the darks are still the very same darks I had at the beginning. You can see what was white is now looking a little bit pinkish and that's fine. Again, not matching with the photograph. And now I'm just doing the mid-tones. Now in order to make this thing really pop, I put in a bit of a background and it's kind of smart if you can think about the color wheel for a second. If you have a dog that's mostly orange, it might be kind of smart to put the complement of orange behind it. And in this case, green will work really well. 
I know blue is the actual complement of orange, but green will work just as well. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, and all three value mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel. See you next time. Bye-bye.